please welcome on stage Johanna Bernardson. So now, Johanna, we could say in memoriam of your of your uh, uncle Jell, um, that was easy and quick. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I wanted to ask you what what was the last piece you put together? It it goes quite recent. Uh, you premiered uh, end of January. Um, when have you finished and working it? And um, what was the last? Uh, the what were the last parts? Um, uh, we worked um, late with a narration voice, uh, and that was maybe for me the most difficult part, actually. Uh, not to say too much, but then again, guide the audience in the right direction. So that was uh, the last struggle. And which parts of the um, footage material have you um, re rearranged, maybe, with parts of the story you told? Uh, well, the, the last thing I we filmed was the interview with my father, the last one. Um, because I had, I mean, we have, I, ha I thought for, from the beginning that I would get them together. Again, but then uh, Shell got ill and um, they met at the funeral. So uh, the story changed um, uh, in a way that I haven't um, uh, seen. So, um, well. And your father was, like, it sounded optimistic that he wanted to be uh, um, closer in contact with his brother and he values these personal relationships so much. Are they more in contact now, Roy and, and your father? A bit, yes, uh, on the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, they live in different uh, cities and uh, they are both uh, uh, have problems uh, walking and uh, traveling. So, uh, yeah, but they have a bit more contact anyway. And I wondered, because me personally, I always have to watch the photo albums together with my grandmother. Um, how have you came come in contact first time with these old photos and Super 8 materials? It seemed like the camera was always present in your family. Uh, well, uh, Shell had uh, filmed this uh, Super 8 footage when he was a kid. And uh, I got, uh, I, uh, I mean, I had not seen them, uh, all of them, um, before I started working with the, this film because uh, he recently uh, digitalized everything. So uh, I got access to them uh, during these, uh, the work with the film. So, um, but I really think they add uh, a beautiful layer um, of the past. But the still photos, I've seen them before, but when you work, uh, when you have a purpose with uh, watching them, you see them in a different light. And was it through the archive? Our family archive material that you came in to the idea or in contact with this lost relationship somehow? Um, well, I, uh, I knew they uh, wanted to be in contact, but no one took the initiative since my grandmother died. And um, so um, then I... I, I mean, both for the story of the film, I need some dramaturgy uh, thing, but also for re them in, re in real life, I wanted them to see each other again, because I thought that uh, it would made, make uh, them good, but um, it was more difficult than I thought, uh, anyway. But um, yeah, but I saw the relationships, they, they had been like just drifted apart, it was nothing special that had happened but it was more like they, uh, a lack of initiative and um, I don't know. Yeah, it seems like they always needed somebody else. Yeah. I think uh, Roy said it or your father that it's up to you now, one of your daughters. Yeah, to it's my father. Yeah, <laughs> to, yeah to but I mean uh, I don't know about, uh, about your families but I think it's more common that the woman in the family takes the Social and uh, emotional uh, responsibility. For men. <laughs> Sorry? For the men. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, when there was no uh, mother left, mm -hmm. uh, they didn't do anything. So then it's just p time passes. And So yeah. you, were, you were and today still are the linking person um, between your uncles and your father. 
are they curious about each other when they in the period that when they didn't saw each other when they didn't have contact did they ask you yeah sometimes they okay. did yeah <laughs> uh how is he and how is he and uh, yeah are there questions from the audience at this point yes please Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there another question? Mm -hmm. Um, in a way, because, I mean, I, I see my father all the time. Uh, but then if you, I mean, if you uh, have a, a film project about someone, you ask different questions than in ordinary life. So, yes, I would say it's a deeper relationship now. And uh, I don't think I, I should have uh, seen Roy at all, actually, during these years, if I hadn't made the film. Because he lives, he lived in Stockholm, and I live in Gothenburg. So, um, I, and I don't go and see him often because, yeah, I don't know why. But um, uh, so I, I'm very happy that I made the film, which I'd had I had been thinking of it for a long time vaguely, and it wasn't. But it was like uh, when I noticed that they are not so very well and they are old and. Um, I thought that uh, I just had to do the film because otherwise I would uh, regret it maybe the rest of my life. So then I started and uh, when I had some footage of them, I thought that maybe, yes, I will continue. So um, I think the, it's a good way to uh, get to know people is actually to make a documentary about them. So um, what happened, you said you worked with your Uncle Roy together for two years? Four, four years. Four years. Yes. Um, and do you know what happened today to the Studio 24? Yeah, it's... Um, I mean, it's uh, Roy doesn't own the studio. He has nothing to do with it uh, now. But uh, his uh, a co-worker, uh, Johan, is actually running a part of it as an film studio to rent and to make uh, his own movies. But it's, uh, Roy uh, has left it. Okay. Mm. Um, also, I, I had the impression that you, um, you know, you worked together with, uh, with your uncle for this uh, films in the beginning 2000s. Then you filmed your uncle Ronnie for a long time. Um, you were filmed by your uncle Kjell. Mm -hmm. And and you took parts of his films. It's um it's a very very amazing uh, and and Im intimate collage of family work, so to say. Also, mm. um, yeah. How did you um, feel like working with this family that is so um, full of film and and energized by the camera? Um. Well, uh, I was very, very nervous to uh, film Roy, actually. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, if he's uh, like the master of film, it's uh, hard to come there and uh, try to make something. I mean, I don't, I don't know. But he was cool with it. It was like, yeah, yeah, I come here. And um, so it, I, it went well. But uh, I was very nervous for every meeting with him. It it also, was also has a strong judgment on documentary. Film, yes, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But he wasn't really um, paying so much attention, I, I think, that I made a film. Mm -hmm. Because it was just me and a small camera. It was not at, at all like uh, uh, when he does his films. So um, he was not like caring too much. I, he didn't even notice it. It, was, it could be a, a film, I think. And sometimes uh, between the meetings with him, he had uh, tended to forget that it was a film about the four brothers. Uh, and not only about him, so I had to remind him about that. Um, but he's happy with the film now, actually. Is there a question from the audience?
<laughs> Thank you. So now you yes, go. Yes, in the back. Yeah, my, my father, uh, he was at the uh, world premiere in Gothenburg. Uh, but before that, he uh, saw it at home on his iPad, I'm, I think maybe 20 times or something, because he wanted to get used to it. He's not used to see himself in, the, in moving images. And uh, he wasn't really... Um, he, he, he was sad... Um, at first, because he, di he, he, he didn't realize what he looks like, how, how ill he looks when he's walking and uh, moving. So he, I think he had to get uh, used to that and to the whole story. But he really, uh, actually, he really loves it. And Roy um, didn't see it uh, before. Um, and then uh, I sent uh, his, um, uh, he, I sent him a link, so he has seen it bef uh, at home. And uh, a few days afterwards, uh, he's, he texted me that he, he likes it a lot. So that's all I know. <laughs> but I will ask him soon, more detailed. It was your debut film, right? In a long documentary. Uh, yeah, I have made uh, many, uh, 10 shorts, uh, shorts, actually. They are mostly also about my family. Because I think that every, it's not that I have a special interesting family, but I think that you don't have to travel away or go very far to uh, find uh, interesting stories because everyone is interested, interesting if you uh, listen carefully. So, um, yeah, that's why. And I, I can tend to get curious about the people I already know. Um, I want, yeah. So we'll probably welcome you in a few years again with a family film. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I don't really know uh, what's, uh, what's the next project. So maybe I will do something else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bernard's on Sisters? Yeah, maybe, yes. <laughs> yes, maybe. Okay. All right. I'd like to... One ah, question. question. Yes, please. Uh, the water is tight enough. How does the water tight enough? Well, no, uh, they are a bit young, uh, but um, no, they, I, they, they say they, uh, they, they don't want to. <laughs> Maybe for uh, financial reasons, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know, we will see. Maybe some of them, uh, one of them maybe. So um, I hope you go home and uh, call your sibling or someone that you have not, uh, you have lost contact with maybe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank also to um, Andrea, Andreas and Tommy from uh, management, um, projection and um, the technique. Um, don't forget about the poll of our audience award. And yeah, speak about our films, come back to Dogfest. We're here in cinemas till the 12th. And thank you again, Johanna Bernatson, for coming. Thank you.